Thank you for joining us once again. At least one person has died and several others have been injured as a result of the bad nature of roads in Sisala West District of the Upper West Region. The chief and people of the Buat traditional area in the district are warning the situation could worsen if nothing is done before the rain set in. Rafik Salam reports. One major challenge faced by the Sisala West District, especially the people of Buat traditional area, is the deplorable roads in the area. Even though the traditional area is one of the food baskets of the region, they have no access roads to their farms. Due to that, they are unable to cut their farm produce home, leaving them to perish. They lost several thousands of Ghana cities each year. The few trunk roads in the area are also not in the best of shapes. At best, they could be described as death traps. Contractors working on the broken culverts have abandoned the sites with no warning signal for motorists and drivers. Karim Musule Luri recently lost a brother through an accident on the bumpy road. There is no signpost. There's, 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 there's nothing to show that there are contractors or there are men working on the road. And that is the very danger for road users. Our brother was just riding from Zini straight away. The road is straight, yet he hit the, the culvert and died. We were thinking that if there were any uh, 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 blockings or the, if there was a signpost on the road, at least it would have signaled him that there's something on the road or something happened on the road and that could uh, have prevented the accident from occurring. And this has resulted in this death that, that has occurred. And we're saying that if, if, if it is not looked up to, we are likely to experience more of this, of this sort. And that is something we, we, we wouldn't want to see again. At the annual Buwala Kelwe Festival of the People of the Area, acting president of the Buwala Tradusna Area, Kuro Baritya Baninya II, expressed concern over the deplorable roads in the area. He warned if the culverts are not constructed before the rain sets in, the area will be cut off from the rest of the region. One of the communities that have a peculiar problem and require immediate attention from government is Sangbaka. With a population of about 450 inhabitants, Sangbaka is the only community in the traditional area that has no electricity and no feeder roads linking it to any other in the area. During the raining season, Sangbaka is therefore often cut off from the other community in the traditional area. I have received report cases of women delivering in the bush on their way to health care centers as a result of the poor nature of the road network. Another area of concern for the people is the Community Day Senior High School, who they are appealing to the government to ensure its speedy completion. Deputy Upper West Regional Minister Amidu Chinia Isaku, on his part, noted that the importance of education cannot be overemphasized as it is the surest way of equipping the people with skills, knowledge, and confidence to make a difference in the transformation of the society. The government on its part will not renege on its promises made during the last elections, such as the free secondary school policy and other social interventions to improve the living standard of the people of Ghana. The first 100 days of this government is an indication of the things to come to Mother Ghana, and we call for fullest cooperation and patience. I am happy to inform you that government has imported over 300,000 metric tons of fertilizer in the country to support farmers in order to boost agriculture production. Reporting for Gay News, Rafik Salam, Zini. Back in the Greater Accra region, and the Auditor General has raised red flags over the auctioning of 24 vehicles by the Agric Ministry, describing the process as non transparent, unfair, and uncompetitive. The vehicles, including double cabin pickups, saloon cars, buses, SUVs, and combined harvesters, were disposed of between 2011 and 2013. Officials of the ministry will be appearing before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament today to respond to questions over the auction. Joseph Opokugapo is our correspondent. He joins us live on the line with details. Joseph, what more have you gathered on this? And so it's expected that the minister and other senior officials of the ministry will be coming around to respond to questions with regard to that particular audit report that was done.
This is on body cell collected between 2011 and 2013. And the indication is that the vehicles in question were eventually sold off to officials of the Ministry for Food and Agriculture. The concern that the Auditor General raises is that, uh, you know, per the procurement laws, what you need to do an auction like this, there should be an open competitive bid, and especially when officials of the Ministry themselves will be involved in the, you know, set package. That should have been the case, but from the test that he done, out of the 24 vehicles that were sold, 23 of them, there was no form of advertisement that was put out there in connection with it. It's only one of them that an advertisement was put out in the newspaper advertising that. The Auditor General in the report is again raising questions that there were only two auctioneers who handled this particular procedure. And the, the indication that he put them, um, one of them handled the auctioning for 23 out of the 24 vehicles. He sees this as a very big anomaly, especially when the indication is that the set of years do not do any work. In fact, according to a portion of the document, what the Auditor General sees uh, as far as this transaction is concerned is a situation of causing financial loss to the state because um, there was no optimist process, but eventually when the vehicle was actually sold off to officials of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, the set of years who was appointed was given some commission, which was the percentage of the amount involved, which amounts to more than 491,000 cities. And so it's expected that officials of the ministry will be responding to those queries that have been raised in the international support when they appear before the committee later today. Beyond these issues that you've brought up, what else should we expect today? Well, for today, that the main issue that has been looked at is expected that tomorrow officials of the Food and Drugs Authority would also be appearing before the committee and uh, finally on Friday, officials of the Ghana Health Service will be appearing before the committee. But today, it's the Minister of Agriculture and his team who will be responding to issues concerning the auction of those vehicles. Thank you very much. Parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opokugapu bringing us uh, some details regarding the Ministry of Agriculture appearing before the Public Accounts Committee today. And we'll definitely bring you all the details you need to know here on Joy News. Now, the coalition of unemployed bonded diploma nurses have given government up to two weeks to post them. At a press conference, the coalition said it will be forced to march to the seat of government, that's the Flagstaff House, if nothing is done within that time. Members say they have been jobless since they completed their national service in August last year. Good morning, colleagues of noble profession, and good morning, media men and women. We are here to release a press conference this morning. Yeah, immediate press release. Coalition of Unemployed Coalition of Unemployed Diploma Nurses, February 2015 badge. We the Coalition of Unemployed Diploma Nurses, 2015 badge, February, who have been picketing at the premises of the Ministry of Health from 24th to 26th of April 2016, have resolved to return to our various homes after extensive consultations from the Ministry of Health and other major stakeholders in the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, from the media, upon meeting with the PRO of the said ministry, we are made to understand that our concern will be addressed with the necessary speed it deserves. For this reason, the leadership of this coalition has spoken to its members to remain calm and return to their various destinations while the leadership makes follow-up to the Ministry for further deliberation. Ladies and gentlemen, from the media, we therefore bring to the notice of the stakeholders and the good people of Ghana that we are granting the Ministry of Health from 26th to 5th of May 2016, 17 to resolve this issue amicably. Ladies and gentlemen, from the media, we therefore state emphatically that failure of the Ministry of Health to get us cleared and posted within the stipulated time will compel us to send our plea to the father of the land, His Excellency, Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado. Ladies and gentlemen, from the various media houses, the leadership and members of this coalition 
will therefore use this opportunity to thank you all for the massive support given us. We say thank you and we are grateful. Well, Afisa Zakaria, the Chief Director at the Ministry of Health, has been responding to the issues. When they held, I wasn't present. They are just briefing me. Yeah. It's something they have already made. That's on their part. All right. We haven't given that deadline. So for about three days now, what are you doing, madam? Well, we're actually working on these things. We are working on that. But, but what really is causing the delay? We hear there are some um, financial clearance that's be, to be done at the Ministry of Finance. How long exactly is it going to take for us to fix it? You see, when you are asking for timelines, it's very difficult giving timelines when finances are concerned. I keep on telling people, we have a pot. What the pot contains, I mean, it's what we are all managing with. So giving timelines and deadlines is normally difficult to tell, especially when some of these things are beyond one's control. Okay, but you talk about financial clearance at the Ministry of Finance. Can we understand exactly what kind of clearance that you're doing at the Ministry? You know, over the years we used to recruit without uh, looking at whether we have funds to even pay the people. But this time it's not like that. We have a public financial management act in place. And these are all laws guiding us with the way we manage, the way we plan things. And so whatever plans we have to execute where finances are concerned, definitely we need to budget and make sure that when these people are working, there are funds to pay them. Over the year, I mean, people could work maybe a year or two, three without getting salary. These days we don't want those things to happen. So um, when exactly, once again, I don't want to go into timelines, but maybe an assurance, because they've given an ultimatum of um, two weeks. So uh, would you be able to meet that deadline that they've set for you? You know, I've engaged them several times, and I keep on telling them, timelines are things I will not give them when it has to do with these things, you know. What I can do, I can give timelines. What I cannot do, I will not deceive them. For us, I mean, working on their issues and the rest, yes. But money is involved, and I've pleaded with them, they should bear with us, and then give us time, we'll sort them out. Now, my colleague Maxwell Agbagba actually covered the press conference and also spoke to the representative of the Ministry of Health. He joins me in the studio now. Maxwell, what more yeah, are they saying? Well, um, Beatrice, you're saying that they, on countless occasions, they've engaged officials at the Ministry of Health, and um, I mean, they have given them assurances, but it looks like a stance right now, and assurance that they are giving to them is not forthcoming. But now they've reassured them, and um, they are hoping that that reassurance that they've given to them would actually um, come into fruition this time around. So they are setting that time for them to be able to work things out and be able to resolve um, some of the issues that they have raised and some of the reasons that necessitated um, the picketing of um, the Ministry of Health. So I get the point that they've been convinced enough mm. because initially they were asking for a written, you know, sort of response yeah. to prove that uh, the mm. ministry was going to respond to their needs because yeah. over the years they've had oral mm. assurances. But yeah. this time they didn't look like they were okay with the oral assurance. Well, uh, I think even if they, they are not even okay with the assurance that they are getting from the ministry, I think conditions even that the Ministry of Health would not, you know, permit them to actually, you know, stay there for a longer time because, I mean, when we went there actually, I mean, some of them in the night had to seek solace on the ground, like hard concrete floor. Mm -hmm. um, there was one of the ladies who actually told me that um, she had to sleep inside a bucket of one of um, the pickups, you know, that were packed there at the Ministry of Health. If you go there, the place is so, you know, wet, you can see that these are like harsh conditions these people are enduring because they want to, you know, they are pressing home for a particular demand. Mm. So if eventually somebody comes out and tells them that, okay, we are going to work things out and ensure that you get paid, then definitely they will back down. And I, I think that's what convinced them to actually back down. So as it stands right now, they are leaving the premises of the Ministry of Health and they are heading, you know, to their various homes. But, I mean, as they stated right in the video that they just played, mm. they are saying that, if they, I mean, the ultimatum that they have given to government, if that deadline 
is up and they don't hear anything, then they would extend their plea um, to the flag staff. As they say, they will go ahead and then petition um, the president, President Akufuado himself, to intervene in this particular matter. Thank, Thank you very much, Maxwell Abogwade, bringing us details of the unemployed nurses who actually uh, had a press conference today to press home their demands for government to post them. We've known Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, John Peter Mewu, has revealed his ministry in the coming days will introduce sustained combat and militant supervision in the various mining communities as part of moves to end illegal mining in the country. The, minister, uh, the ministry says uh, it has uh, also reviewed and given a fresh 30-day ultimatum for Galamseas to move their excavators from the various mining communities or risk punitive actions. But if Idris has been touring the Western region with the anti Galamse Tax Force headed by the minister as part of efforts to end the illicit trade and filed the following report. The journey took the tax force to Dominasi, Durata Kunta, and Hiawa, all in the Western region. And the first port of call was to a mining site in Dominasi in the Inzuma East district. When we start the, uh, the reclamation process, uh, as I already noted, there is going to be a sustained uh, combat and militant you know, supervision process in place which is going to last a minimum of one year. And so we don't expect that. Uh, a good question somebody asks is, you, in an attempt to reclaim, people will come back and do the digging. Because there's going to be supervision, you know, the police, the military, the law enforcement agencies will be around. We expect to maintain you know, what we are uh, witnessing now. So it is important that the reclamation, as you rightly put it, we start as early as possible. That is number one. Number two, it's to begin to look for the alternative livelihood for those people. Of course, these are the guys that will be brought into the MMIP. At Hiase, the tax force arrested this sole miner who was busily mining for gold despite the ban. The Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, John Peter Mehu, ordered the tax force to seize the pumping machine he was using at the site. The nonsense you are doing around here, you are killing people. And that is what we are against. We will allow you to mine, but we will teach you how to do it in a very nice way. But this very one, we will not allow you. You have to pack. Were you told that you need to pack and leave the site? We have traveled over the, almost the whole of this region. Most of your friends have left. You are still working. Why? The miner explained why he defied the order to end mining and begged the minister to return his pumping machine. I am doing this because of hunger. Of course, I've heard about the ban, but I lost count of the dates. That's why I'm here today. But I can assure you that I'm packing my tools and I'm leaving site immediately. Second port of call was Pristia, where the two deputy ministers paid a courtesy call on the divisional chief of the area. Two deputy ministers were met with a protest by the youth of the area who are predominantly into Galamse. Chamfine operators are mostly from the Volta region and the authorities are also part. We do not want those machines here. We want the authorities to allow us to continue our activities, especially those of us who do not destroy the water bodies. We made the police arrest those using the Chamfine machine to destroy the water bodies. They are the main culprits, and we think government should rather direct its energy by arresting those who engage in chamfine operations. The hashtag which is running, of course, is no to Galamse, and I am for it. So the hashtag is no to Galamse. From Prestia, which is the hub of mining in the country, this was Bill Latif Idris reporting for Joy News. Yes, so watching News Desk on Johnny's. When we come back, we'll bring you the story about how some manufacturing companies survived in the midst of the serious erratic power supply some years ago. Don't go away.